Okay, listen, I know I hit you in the head Twice. with the Rolls Royce and the Maybach door. Yes, listen, I'm sorry. It was just, I was trying to be funny. I promise this will stop it as a proper proximity sensor before it hits your right, head. Right, but we could use a mannequin. We haven't got to use. We could use a mannequin, but we have to have faith in engineering, okay? It's a leap of faith. It's gonna work, trust me, it will stop. Just like this? Yeah, 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 and push the button. Just don't you hit me. Yeah. See? <sighs> okay, so, I wasn't expecting. Oh! Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And this is the BMW i7. i7. Meaning that this all new 7 series that we're playing with today is equipped with two electric motors that together output 536 horsepower and 549 pound feet of torque. It gets up to 512 kilometers of range, and for the low, low price of $194,200 Canadian, as spec, it's filled with so much technical wizardry that Severus Snape starts getting involved. It will bewitch your mind. With a 31 inch drop down TV. Ensnare your senses. With an unrivaled sound system. Bottle fame, brew glory. Ventilate your back and massage your bum. But that stuff alone does not a luxury flagship make. It has to perform and look the part as well. So, does it? And if you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing about. So subscribe, hit the bell. Here it is. There it is. Just soak it all in. Yep. Soak it all. It's like being waterboarded. Yes, by event urine red. Ev event urine? Event urine. Event urine. Event urine red. Three, metallic. What was the event for the urine? Was it getting punched in the kidneys? No, it's not, you know, it's a good color. Does it actually have the word urine in it? It, it does, does have the word urine in it. Um, good. But, but it doesn't have urine in it otherwise. It's actually a lovely red. And it's red being shadowed over by black sapphire, because this is a two-tone paint example. I mean, and just judging by how hideous it is, it must be free. No, it's $12,000 for the two-tone. Um, Hey, at least the quality of the paint is really good. Well, I was going to gloss over that the same way the painters did. <laughs> the, uh, the cheese peel, orange peel. Cheese peel. You're right. This is way <laughs> past orange peel. This is right into cheese peel. Pretty orange peel. Okay. Um, um, not so, so good looking. We don't need to talk that much about this um, because it speaks for itself. And it's saying, <laughs> holy <laughs> shit, I'm ugly. Uh, <laughs> this, is, this isn't a Seven Series <laughs> review. This is just the roast of Seven Series. <laughs> so, what is this big thing in the center of it as well? That's technology. Oh, oh technology. <laughs> technology. Spe speaking of which, come on over here. Yeah. These doors have a mind of their own. Yeah, we haven't really got on with them. So honest. as far as we can tell, they do a different thing every single time you push the button. Yes. Right? So this, I'm going to push this, and it will... Okay, I'm gonna push it again. It's closing. No, it's not. It's not. No, it and now it goes. Stop. Oh, it doesn't stop. Yeah, it it kind <clears> of <throat> it's randomized. This opened itself into my M2. Yes. Yeah. It was it was BMW on BMW violence. It yeah. was bad. I know. I don't know why. I, am, I have PPF. I'm fine. Oh, don't right. worry. Thank you for asking. <laughs> so, then. The rest of it then, listen, we've, the previous generation 7 series yes. got a big grill. All right? yep, we said did. that was an issue. Yep. This one they've gone with what they call a monolithic uh, aesthetic, right? Which is like, the, I, I googled it, 
That just means big, like single stone. Well, I thought it shopped at Spencer's when I first heard it, but you know, <laughs> it means that it's, yeah, from a single block of stone. Um, and I think from the profile, it's fine. The profile is not honestly that bad at all. I'm not yeah. a huge fan of the, the, the i7 wheels. I think that they're I mean, probably the, yeah. arrow and all that stuff, There's right? a few different wheels. So this yeah. has the, the Shadowline M Sport package. Sorry, the M Sport Shadowline package. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of M badges on this car that is so far from being an M car. Yeah. Yep. But it's got 21 inch wheels as part of that package and it's got blacked out elements. Um, this Because this otherwise can be silver. Can I just say that? Yeah. I, Making uh, a lot of noises. It is, and it's buzzing at us, and I'm sorry. It, it is not a good looking vehicle in this spec. No. That said, you can make it less of a not good looking vehicle by doing it in matte black. Just black it all out. Yeah, the whole thing, then you can't really see the grill that well. Yeah. Right? But remember, in i7 spec, this just had to be better looking than the EQS. Which it is. Right. Yes. The problem is, in 7 Series petrol spec, it, it looks still like looks like this. Yeah. And then it competes with the S-Class, which... Yeah. It's going to lose yeah. that battle. It's gonna, not, maybe not in the car world, I haven't driven that one yet, but visually, the S-Class is like a classy, understated German limo. But where mm -hmm. the 7 Series has not lost in the past is its driving dynamics. Well, listen, we're about to find out if it makes up for whatever the hell this is. All right, yeah. sitting in the back here for the first time. We were mean just then. We, we were deservedly so, I think. Right, <laughs> but you don't get self-conscious of what your private jet looks like from the clouds, the other people in the clouds. <laughs> like, the whole point is the inside. No, but most, if not all, private jets look dope. But if BMW <laughs> made one. All right, <laughs> go on, how's it driving? So, it drives very, very well. I think, right off the bat, I can say that this fixes all the issues that I had with the EQS. It does have the rear wheel steering, which works great in parking lots and feels a bit weird. It feels like you're drifting at low speeds, but it immediately is gone when you're at speed. There's no instance of it as you're going through low speed corners. Everything feels very well calibrated. Yeah, when you picked this up, yeah. you called me and said, this is an exceptionally good vehicle. Yes, it right. is. Wonderful to drive. Honestly, I think everything about it is very, very intuitive. The brake pedal feels natural. The throttle pedal feels natural. The, the, the EV power is not like egregious and like punch you in the face, but here, I'm gonna roll onto the throttle. Oh, feels good with the cushion. Here. It just gives you torque. Well, this is, this is like 0 to 60 in four and a half seconds or so, so it matches the 750i that we drove yes. a year or two ago. It is very quick. I mean, right now I'm in like the normal mode or whatever, right? But I also have, um, I've got a Ooh. sport mode, right? Oh, and then I've got a boost button. All right, I got 10 seconds of boost. Ooh. Oh, that's some hand Zimmer noises right there. That's some hand Zimmer you can noises just tell. right there, for sure it yeah. is. Yeah, no, I mean, it has all the driving modes, right? It has- All of them? Yeah, yeah, it does. It has personal, sport, and there's an efficient, obviously. And then, well, there's these ones, and I haven't really figured out what they do. So if I click Expressive, okay, it's opening that sun's shade, and it's changed the dash. Okay, well, it's making a weird noise when I accelerate, but other than that, do you feel any difference? Nothing. Yeah. I do have a strange urge to join an interpretive dance class, though. Oh, I'll interpret for you. All right, so then if I go to Relax, I haven't, you know, put some sunshades up and stuff, but other than that, I haven't been able to figure out what it does. Do you feel any more relaxed? No, I feel like the ambient lighting changed, though. Anyway, the point is, is that this car is all about technology. Technology it, yeah. first. It is, yeah. which is strange, because I feel like that's always kind of been the S-Classes thing, and then the 7 Series has just gone here. No, I'm no, a big no, 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 different, different meaning of the word technology. I'm not talking about like innovations in the car space. I'm talking about just throwing an Apple store at a car. That's what this I'm is. I'm gonna press the button, you ready? Um, you go ahead and press the button, yep. There it comes. I can't even see your face anymore. All I see is you being entertained that by screens. That is an insane feature. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a ridiculous It's $4,900 for the privilege, but. I mean like, it's not that much for what it is. Right? Uh, yeah, if you've gone the whole way, it's what? It's 2% of the entire sale price of the car. And it's like yeah. the showpiece. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's the reason that you buy this. It and I really can adjust is. it 
forward and, and aft, right? And the aft, yes, you can. Yeah, well, you can only go so far. And you're lucky that my driving position isn't far enough back that you were not permitted to put the screen down. Oh, it doesn't let you? No, and you can't move my seat for safety reasons, obviously. So if there were a tall, dr basically, you have to hire a short gentleman to drive your car. Or lady. Or lady. I wasn't implying that women are short. They're, they're in larger supply, short ladies. <laughs> Yes, it is a tech fest back there. You have a control over all of the things with your little screen on yeah, your... Yeah, this screen's great. It is. It, my only issue with it is that it's not the most responsive. I've been playing around with it, and it doesn't always... It's not like if you're used to an iPhone, it doesn't feel at that level. It's very close, right. but it's but not I've quite... I've got massaging, ventilated, heated... Yep. And I guess, and heated surfaces as well. I think a big part of that is all the money for all the packages. This is quite a modded yeah, yeah. out yeah, car. Yeah, you, you, got, you got to spend the money, yeah. And I think for $300 a piece, it's still BYOI. If you don't get the TV, you can have your own iPad connector. <laughs> yeah, this is an iPad. Which, by the way, this is one of the most, this is a strange comment, one of the most satisfying, like, slide away things <laughs> ever. You learn the important stuff here on Throttle House. It's, I, I, listen, the, I'm being bounced around slightly, Yes. It's not Rolls-Royce level. No, it's not. The ride is still very good, and it controls its mass. Like, what it might not have in the most perfect ride, I think it makes up for in how it goes around corners. Yes. Like, it handles its mass extraordinarily Whereas well. Whereas the EQS felt dangerous. All the time. Yeah. yeah. From a pure driver's perspective, whether we're talking about the person who's being driven or me, I think this succeeds at being an ultra-luxury car. I have one more caveat, and this is completely subjective. You ready? I'm ready. We said that we thought that all luxury cars will be elevated once they become EVs. Yes. Right? That hasn't happened for me. I thought I was going to get... This is the first ultra-luxury car we've driven that's... And it, can you put the, that screen... I can't see your face. <laughs> uh, this is the first ultra-luxury car we've driven that is a full EV. Okay? Yeah. And the thing that I thought was going to happen didn't happen. Instead of it being like, wow, this is the smoothest experience possible, what it did do was make this car feel like a $50,000 EV. I, so from the passenger seat, I think our original assertion was correct. I think the, the electric part of it has escalated it. It's removed any weird shifts or yeah. any engine noise no. that feels unrefined. Like even a Rolls-Royce V12 can sound unrefined, even in the Ghost. Yeah. I think it's because of the direction that we've experienced it from. We've now associated with EV power. We've driven so many Ionic 5s, EV6s, I I4s, that we now think of it as that price range style of engine. Because in the past, that's what's happened. We drive a six cylinder, it's normally between forty and seventy thousand dollars. We drive an eight cylinder, it's normally between fifty and ninety thousand. We drive a V12, it's always expensive. So we're tuned to 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 think that. I think well, I, we I, are, and that's I think that's the issue. That's why I said Objectively, but, it's better. It's but that more just luxurious. means we'll adjust. Where I, where I find it hurts the luxury thing, and this is what we've said about luxury in the past, is luxury is time, it's convenience, it's, it's minimum input, maximum output. Yes. And you driving around, calling me upset yesterday, trying to find a way to charge this so that we could film it for today, yep. that is not luxury. I don't have a fast charger at home. Like, even if I had a level two, I don't think I would have had enough time. I had to find a that DC fast charger. Yep. And the fastest one I could find was 40 kilowatt, and I had to drive 20 minutes to get to it. And again, I don't live in a, a you know, <laughs> nowhere. Like I live in a city with hundreds of thousands of people in it, and there still isn't one in my town. That's so bad. that's an argument towards the, uh, the M7, the I, sorry, the 760 X drive. Yes. Which sounds like a V12. It's not though. It's now the V8. But even then, I still think that for me, we, we've, known luxury to be that sense of grandeur, that sense of a highly sophisticated, carefully tuned engine up front, and you put your foot down and the front lifts up like you're going up on a boat on plane, and you get the subtle roar no, of cylinders. I have your quote from earlier, which just says, this is calibrated perfectly, so yeah, but I now associate I said, that with Subjectively, luxury. I miss a V12, just saying. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's pull over and have a look at this tech then. Okay. All right, so I tap this. Yeah, yeah, tap that, and it will close. There it goes. Ooh, you can't hurt me from in here. <laughs> it very confidently closes. There's no like, oh, maybe I'll check to see if there's a small child's head there. No, it will close, yeah. It will just it close. Will just close. Yeah. All right, same here in the front. Are. 
uh, mirror dimension from Doctor Strange is in front of me. Yes, it is. That is how they do ambient lighting in this car, right? So that changes depending on the different mode you're in. If you click that right there, it flashes, yeah. It looks like I'm inside See? of a police car. What is it with you and technology? I'm sorry. It's gentle. It is a hazard symbol. When was the last time you needed to use a hazard symbol in an emergency and you went like this? You went... <laughs> you, but you... If, I, no. I, I, listen, no, you're right. You're right. You, you, Look at that. Look what I'm doing right 90 now. 90-year-old man. Look what I'm doing right you're, now. You're pressing everything as hard as you can. Yeah, just... Just like that. Yeah, but but you're, when you're driving down the road, you're driving... Anyway. Where are you driving? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this moon is impossible <laughs> to navigate. <laughs> yes, those should be buttons, 100%. Oh, speaking of buttons, this is a good thing. Moving on to good stuff. There's a lot of technology in this car, right. and we'll go over a few things in a minute, but one of the coolest things that I've found is that there are shortcut buttons for all the different... So if I click this here, this little hamburger, it brings me to driver settings. If I click this here, it brings me to lighting settings. If I click this here, it brings me to seat oh, settings, okay. massage, So they, at first, shortcuts. they seem sporadically placed, but they actually yes. are placed in the theme of the thing they do. So the seat one's over yes. there, the driver, okay. Yeah, no, they, they, no. They're, it's, quite a, it's, a good, it's a good idea. I don't know if BMW came up with that, but I've never seen it before, I don't think. Yeah. So obviously we're missing from the EQS, the Star Trek level giant screen thing. I'm not missing it. You're not missing it? No. No, no this is fine. This is fine. It gives me all the information that I need. Uh, I, I mean, it is for me, I mean, we can make jokes about me being 90 as much as you want, but I have grown up around technology and this car is too complicated. Like here, just, just, just climb, climb on you there. There's your climb it. Yeah, but I used to be a train conductor, so I actually yeah. know that this... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's busy. And also, it's, it's yep. a bit slow on the finger, though. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and, and, in, and at first glance, it's not really that clear what to do. Also, check this out. You go here, go to your apps. Does this not look like a really low-rent, like, Amazon Fire iPad from, I don't mind like, it. 2005? Well, you, obviously, you can, use, you can just use CarPlay, but I like that it integrates the CarPlay stuff. I would just sit yes. in the CarPlay screen, though. I'd never be on Yeah, this. Just, the car plays great. But I like the gloss black wood going on here with the grain. I love the M-Stripe accent, especially on the headrest there. Back up. Now, I know that the M-Stripe doesn't belong on this. It triggers me. Yeah. Yeah. It shouldn't. It, sh it just shouldn't Even be in here. this safe space. Like, sit, put, parking this next to my M2 in my driveway, I immediately go, like, that cheapens that car. No, I know. I right? Know. They, they were, they're overly generous with that, especially Stupid. because this just has the M Sport shadow line package. But they've always yeah, they've always done that. I mean, the M240i even has that awesome, which, again, it's so cool. Whether it belongs in the car or not, <laughs> it should be in the M2. But it has that yes. art piece there, yeah. Speaking of art pieces, look at this speaker yeah. system. This yeah. is the only other vehicle we've been in that has the Bowers and Wilkins diamond, crystal, crusted, special, <laughs> ultimate, 3D you don't surround what it's called, sound. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> it's the same system as the iX, which we have lauded and other people have as well as the best sound it system is. in any vehicle. I think this is. I I think it is as good. As good. Yeah, I think the the, the SUV shape complements the iX a bit more. Yeah. I, I, sitting in the back when you were playing it, it, it's not as good in the back of this. I will say though that on the way here this morning, I had this sound system pumping some tunes, and I I don't think I've ever been upset to get off the highway. Yeah. I was in a zone to a degree that I've never experienced before where almost to an unsafe level where all the transport trucks surrounding me weren't real. They didn't matter. The one was coming, I was like, oh wow, look at and that. That's it's luxury. so real. The, and think about the experience <laughs> your passengers having with yes. a 31 inch TV in front of them. Yeah, no, it's very cool. This I've car never is, sat in a car that has that. Yeah, it's about, it's about technology. It's really, this is about technology first. And I mean, that's what that's what BMW has said. This they sell more cars to the Chinese market than anything else, and that is what apparently sells is those big grills and this much technology. It says that in the press release. It says that right in the press release. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, that, that's what they're doing. There's some great stuff happening inside. Like you know, the crystals are great. They're fantastic if you want to catch the sun for for an energy and source. shine it right into your yeah. eyes. Yeah. The steering wheel. We always get in a BMW and say that the steering wheel is the same in all of them. This one's a very cool steering wheel. Isn't this the same as the iX? No, I don't think it is. Oh, okay. And you, well, first of all, we've got the M badge there, which is brilliant. But, but then this is this is a really cool <laughs> no, no. design here. The design is great. I find all the controls to be intuitive, and this is how I control the the automatic self driving stuff. The tech. It has that thing where you don't have to have your hands on the steering wheel, and it steers for you. Oh, it's got the next level. The of, next level. And, and if yeah. you indicate, it switches lanes. It does. However, I found it to be glitchy. 
Um, it, it, it doesn't keep you perfectly in the lane. It bounces a little bit. And one time I was coming up behind a transport truck without it pulling in front of me or anything. And it basically emergency braked and panicked as yeah. opposed to just slowing me down slowly. Yeah, the, having faith in those systems is still difficult. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. it has lots of stuff. Yeah, you, got, you got wireless charging in the back. Oh, these the work great. They, they make my phone super hot. So hot. Yeah, yeah. they don't charge it, but. No, the, if you want a hot phone, wireless charging. 100% is yeah. the way to do it. I, I, it's weird. I've come away from this and I, I think this is really quite fantastic and it, like perfect spec, 100% blacked out. Like if I could have paper bag spec, which is basically, <laughs> which is basically what blacked out is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I would do that. But yeah, I yeah. think. I agree. This is a brilliant car. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I do think, however, that they've packed so much technology into this that they ran out of time to perfectly calibrate it. Like the doors and the and the and the. Don't lane get the doors. Assist. Save a couple of grand. Yes. Don't get the power doors. Don't get the two tone paint. Don't get the doors. It's done. Yeah. So there is a perfect spec here. There, well, there is a perfect spec, but even still, I think that there are a few things in this car. Like some of the stuff is laggy. There's lots of screens. I think it just needed a little bit more polishing. Yeah. But otherwise, the the foundations are here to be the future of ultra luxury technology transport. But as it is, stands, if someone handed this to you ten years from now, you'd say, "Why do you want to hurt me?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fortunately, when new at least, the new 7 Series does not want to hurt you. It wants to envelop you in comfort and luxury. The back seat experience is truly spectacular, far, far superior to the likes of the Mercedes EQS. Also in comparison to the EQS, the i7's athletic ability, despite its heft, is BMW magic at its finest. In some places, the technology, as Thomas said and my head showed, overshoots its purpose. The inconsistent power doors and the stupid touch buttons for emergency items are good examples. But from the sound system to the drop-down TV to the theatrical driving modes, it creates a sense of wonder that may even be the envy of an S-Class. As for the EV stuff, the 512 km range, while fine, is not revolutionary. Also, in the cold Ontario weather, we only saw 400 km at best, and the ride, while gloriously insulated and calm on smoother roads, can get overly busy and bumpy when faced with tarmacular adversity. But, stepping back, if you were picked up at an airport in this by surprise, very few vehicles, Rolls Royces included, could make your drive home feel as special as the new 7 Series. And as far as luxury flagships go, that might just be all that matters. Thanks for watching. What about you, Severus? 7 Series, G90, S-Class? I prefer not to answer. Nah, come on. you got to give an answer. Fine. The S-Class. Interesting. All right. Yeah, I thought you'd just go for the 7 Series and then remove the Dumbledores. Dumb, dumb, dumb doors. Dumb doors. Dumb doors. Not the Dumbledores. The dumb door. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> hmm. Pity.